The Faith at Work movement is on a cusp, destined for great things. God uses people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of professions to advance His kingdom. Work is a crucible that God uses to refine us. Everybody's work matters to God. The only thing that really brings lasting change is the gospel of Jesus Christ applied to every area of life. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Are you overwhelmed by Jesus Christ? I was really excited last night when the curtain was pink because I thought I could hide in the curtains. <laughs> I'm definitely nervous. Um, my name is Margot Ingberg. I am the founder and CEO of Pinkabella Cupcakes. I am a wife, a mother, an entrepreneur. Today I'm going to talk about what passion has to do with creating a company that is both economically valuable and has a great purpose for God's kingdom. But first, I'm going to tell you the story of how it all began and how my passion for cupcakes was born. I spent 20 years just out of college until I founded Pinkabella Cupcakes, running and operating a successful house cleaning service. I cleaned for anyone from big company executives, professional athletes, to cute little old ladies. I loved my serving my customers, and in many ways I found it a ministry to be able to take time off their plates. Though I loved my cleaning business, God stirred in me a desire to do something more for his kingdom. My husband Doug and I have four adopted children. They are 19, 17, 14, and 9. We first adopted a six-week baby, six baby girl from a gal that I mentored through an organization called Young Life. That began a four-year fight for our lives against the birth father in prison, a level three, three-time sex offender. But because he was in the system, he had the right to fight. He actually had more rights than we did. During that time, my husband and I became keenly aware of the needs of many children in need of homes. And we were passionate about doing something about it. So we started the process to adopt another child, just one. <laughs> but on the very day that our adoption of our Jazzy was finalized, we received an email picture of a little baby girl that had just been born. Two days later, my daughter and I traveled to Guatemala to meet Mia. She's the little one in there. <laughs> Two weeks later, we traveled again with my husband so he could meet her. While we were there and on the elevator with the facilitator, she had two older children, then seven and nine. In Spanish, they were asking her something. She was shaking her head, no, 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 no. And we said, what, what are they asking? We didn't speak Spanish. And she said, they want to know if you're adopting them. And my husband very boldly said, yes. <laughs> and I said, hmm, did you say that out loud? Because I'm pretty sure they know yes in English. <laughs> and they did. They were doing a celebrating dance on the elevator. However, the facilitator informed us that she was taking them to meet another family. Later that night, she called to check in on the baby. When she called, um, we asked about the big kids. How'd it go? She said, oh, the, the family didn't want them, like matter-of-factly. And I said, did, she say, did they say that in front of them? And she said, oh, yes, but they're used to that. No worries. That broke our hearts. I've told my story many times, and I still... <laughs> We had no plan or money to adopt two more kids. We told the facilitator that we had no idea how we could do it, but that we wanted to take them. She said, no problem, I'll do a two for one. <laughs> like they're donuts. <laughs> My now two older kids, Gabe and Tice, are the best transaction we've ever placed on a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. We placed them on a credit card. And there is so much backstory and amazing testimony of how God provided, literally down to the very amount that we charged. <laughs> but I don't have enough time to go into that story. 
We brought Gabe and Ty's home at the age of nine and 11. Now to the business of cupcakes, passion, and purpose. At this point, our two older children had two American dreams, to go to Disneyland and to have a birthday party. They had never had one. After bringing them home, our kids and getting them enrolled in public school in our affluent Kirkland neighborhood, we learned that there were many kids that couldn't afford treats on their birthday. That broke my heart again. I couldn't imagine not being celebrated like all the other kids. And I thought to myself, cupcakes are the rage, and cupcakes are something I can do. And I've always had a passion for baking. So I went to the school, and I volunteered to be cupcake mom. I always wear pink. <laughs> bus, <laughs> and I offered to supply treats for any kid who couldn't afford them. I made them special, not just ordinary. The requests were pouring in, and my friends started asking me to make cupcakes for their kids. So I came up with an idea, and I presented it to my husband, who is the director of development for Olive Crest, an organization that helps foster kids find forever homes. I said... What if we open a shop and we were able to use the profits to fund organizations that help children in need? Now, mind you, it was 2009, the malls were vacant for good reason, and I got a killer deal. <laughs> um, I, I, I thought, I'll take the risk. I wanted to try it. So we really believed that God was calling us to this, and in a really risky time, we stepped out in faith, and that is how Pinkabella was born. We opened our first in flagship store in a mall, in a sleepy mall in Redmond, Washington. On opening day, we sold 2,000 cupcakes. And to date, we've opened, I'm sorry, and to date, we've donated a half a million cupcakes to organizations that raise money to fund nonprofits. We are five stores strong. Our whole mission became about helping people. It's what drives me every day. Small business is hard, but when you have a vision, a purpose beyond your profits, your mission is accomplished. I get asked all the time, are you profitable? And I say, I have no idea. <laughs> Bookkeepers hate me. <laughs> I will say, having this mission Having this passion to help kids and the employees that have become like family to me is what drives me every day. At Pinkabella, we don't measure our success by a P&L, but the difference we get to make in the world and the people around us. When you have the kind of passion that gets you up every day, that weathers the storms, and others count on you for jobs, how can you not work hard to further God's kingdom work? Who knew there could be so much drama in cupcakes? <laughs> Owning a small business means just that. Your staff is small, and in the beginning, I thought I was going to do it all on my own. Why not? There, were very little, there was very little time for sleep, let alone family time. Most of the time, family time meant eating dinner around the window of our cute little shop when my husband would tote our then four small children down to see mommy at her second home. It has been a family affair since the inception, and now seven years later, my three older children work the stores, and my son makes the buttercream for the entire company while attending a local college. My kids used to bring me dinner, now I get to bring them dinner. It doesn't end here, though. With the pressure of growth, we finally decided to open some franchises. This has been a painful two steps forward, one step back process. We sold five franchises in the first month we were approved, and we terminated one of them in the eight months in. I struggled with that decision, knowing that my franchisee would lose her investment and become very angry. At the same time, I had employees to protect and a brand to protect that has been used for kingdom work in so many ways. I had to rely on God for his protection against lawsuits and lost customers. It has not been easy. This is very fresh. We have just 
recently come off of this, and I spent half the summer crying. (laughs) But I prayed more, and I pressed in. And I found ways to use the experience to live out my faith in a very public way. Inviting others to stand with us and witness God's provisions and blessings amidst the storm. Letting others see just how big God is has been a huge witness. Trusting God to guide what we do, how we do it, and how it serves the world has been an ongoing experience. I have not done this alone. I have had a community of faithful people who have walked beside me and guided me in my faith and my work. Mentors and friends that have helped me build a culture that reflects the God I serve. I have a core of incredible managers that have all been with me since almost the very beginning. And I have a family that shares the same purpose for the business of doing good. My children have learned the value of sacrifice and working hard and giving back. They are all incredibly grateful and generous, far beyond their years. It really does take a village. I'm going to leave you with this. Turning your passion into profit happens when you identify your life's purpose. You make a connection between your faith and your ability to fulfill that purpose. Focus on building a strong, profitable brand and align your ambition for success with one greater than yourself, Jesus. Passion is not what we say, it is what we do. Thank you.